Hi, everybody. This is Dave Vellante. We're here live at Wikibon headquarters in Marlboro, Massachusetts. Post Hurricane Sandy, we survived. Uh, not too many power outages, not too long. Of course, we're right back at it. Last week was big data week for SiliconANGLE Wikibon. We had the Cube at IBM's IOD conference out in Las Vegas, and then we brought it to Strata plus Hadoop World, the O'Reilly Media and Cloudera uh, sponsored conference. So we had the Cube at both. It was very interesting to juxtapose IBM's IOD to Strata plus Hadoop World. IBM is really super gluing its analytics business to the big data meme. IBM's taking the concept that Thomas Watson put forth, uh, the mantra of think, and they're using think big, tying into the smarter planet. IBM has an incredible portfolio of capabilities uh, spanning hardware and software and services and really is going after the big data business, trying to be a leader there, integrating across its portfolio, going hard after different industries. A lot of, lot of suits, a lot of blue suits at IBM IOD. Juxtapose that to Strata plus Hadoop World. A lot of young people and, and you know, middle-aged and older people, the whole mix of uh, individuals from across the industry, startups, uh, established companies, uh, really trying to put forth visions of a better society, of big data really changing the world, improving education, improving healthcare, a lot of big ideas, as I say, a lot of startups and a lot of innovations. Now, one of the things that we've been tracking now for quite some time is the notion that real time meets big data. And we saw that last week, both at IBM IOD and at Strata. And one of the companies that is really leading that charge is Adapt. Adapt won the Startup Showcase Award at Strata plus Hadoop World. Uh, and we're here with Ming Sheng Hong, who's the Chief Data Scientist at Adapt. And we're going to talk about that and other trends. Welcome, Ming Sheng. Thank you, Dave. Glad to be here. Yeah, good to have you back on, on the Cube. We just saw you last week at Strata. You gave us a demo. Uh, it was a shorter demo. Of course, we had, as you know, the, the planes were backing up on the Cube. We had a, a lot of people who wanted to get on, so we had to cut that short. So we've invited Ming Sheng back here to do a little bit more of a drill down. Now, before we go into the demo, I want to talk a little bit about that concept that I put forth up front. Real time meets big data. Now, we saw that at Oracle Open World with Larry Ellison, where he said real time meet Big Iron, or, or Hadoop meet Big Iron. Now, Larry Ellison's view of the world is you basically use Hadoop for the filtering, and then you ETL the data into an exadata infrastructure, bring in exalytics uh, or exalogic, uh, if, in the case of, of Oracle, million, million and a half dollar infrastructure to really run your deep analytics. So I have to ask you, Ming Sheng, is that your philosophy of the world? I would say that uh, this way of using Hadoop is certainly one of the popular or even prevalent ways. Uh, the notion of using Hadoop as sort of the big data refinery, because based on the original design of, ha of Hadoop, it doesn't support standard SQL or interactive performance, so it doesn't really address all the analytics needs. But actually, as things evolve, these days, um, if you look at Cloudera, uh, Hadapt, and many other companies that are looking to improve the Hadoop technology, they're really looking to expand the role of uh, Hadoop in the entire big data uh, you know, ecosystem. So it's definitely going much uh, beyond the original ETL, sort of simple data dumping and transformation kind of uh, role. Now the other thing that we've been tracking is the, really the unification of SQL and NoSQL, those two worlds coming together. And of course the advantage of this is that there's a whole lot of people out there that understand you know, structured query language and there's a big base of of programmers that can take advantage of that capability. And if you marry that with Hadoop, where there's a lot less skill sets, now you're bringing a whole new set of capabilities and skill sets into the Hadoop ecosystem. And the prediction is that that will really begin to explode uh, the, the steepness of the S-curve. And we saw that with Hadapt. Hadapt made the announcement um, uh, uh, two weeks ago, actually, and then showcased it last week at, at Strata. Uh, Cloudera announced something called Impala. MapR really brought together you know, some of its capabilities and isn't talking about drill, a new capability to, to bring SQL and NoSQL together. Uh, we saw a company like Platfora talking more about real-time uh, Hadoop. But, but I really want to uh, talk to you, Ming Sheng, about Adapt and, and what you've done to really unify SQL and NoSQL. So what's, your, what's Adapt's angle on that? Yep, so Hadap from day one, uh, which uh, was traced back to, I think, four years ago, uh, originated from the Yale Research Lab uh, by the, uh, you know, Daniel Abadi and his team. Uh, they focused on unifying uh, MPP database 
with Hadoop. Uh, as we discussed earlier, people do understand these two pieces of the technology are complementary. So the standard practice these days is, okay, I need to set up two clusters, a Hadoop one and an MPP database. I need to connect them, move data around. There's a lot of administration overhead as well as performance overhead for the moving the data around. So the logical next step is how can you unify these two clusters into one? And that's really the original thesis of Hadapt. Uh, technically non-trivial, uh, a lot of patterns or, uh, or originating from that. And uh, since then we have you know, evolved to really adding advanced analytics that you know, help empower the business analysts along with BI tool support. Because if you, as you know, business analysts love to use the visualization tools and the interactivity performance like the, what they experience with Tableau and other BI tools. And they don't have the expertise to write, MapReduce, or SQL uh, queries. So the way to bring the millions of business analysts onto the bandwagon of Hadoop is by providing BI tool support, interactive performance, and building advanced analytic packages that they can just click with a couple, uh, you know, by clicking mouse buttons. And that's some of the key things that we added in the Hadap 2.0 that we announced last week. So a couple points uh, based on what Ming Sheng just said. So Daniel Abadi is no lightweight. He's been around. His PhD thesis essentially became Vertica. So we, we saw obviously a very successful application of that core research uh, become a, a company, a very successful company with a, a great exit. Um, I guess the second point is the other big trend that we're seeing is visualization, bringing big data to the masses. Just historically, the decision support business, the BI business, has been targeted at a few analysts, a very small number of people within organizations that can maybe make some big decisions and have high impact uh, decisions on the organization's bottom line. But the thrust that we're hearing in the big data world today is really to bring things like visualization and other tools and simplifying the capabilities of big data and putting it in the hands of business people, not just the super you know, analytic geeks and the, you know, the, the risk management st statisticians. So that's something that we're going to be talking about. So Ming Sheng, why don't you set up the demo and then we'll, we'll get into it. Sure. So actually, uh, this is going to be a demo showcasing some of the key features from Hadap 2.0. As I mentioned earlier, BI tools integration, and we picked one of the popular tools on the market, Tableau. I personally love it. Uh, so th this is going to be conducting not just standard analytics, but advanced ones like computing sentiment, you know, building predictive models, and doing full text search. It's all through the visual, visual interface. And on the back end, we have Hadapt running, uh, receiving and processing SQL queries uh, with very low latency. And finally, I'm going to show you a couple advanced analytic packages. So to start the demo, I'm going to just kick off the incremental load. So in other words, I'm going to do loading and querying at the same time. It's all happening in my Mac lap laptop. right? So the key point of this demo is not about scalability, but certainly inheriting you know, the properties of Hadoop. We scale beyond tens of terabytes. So in this setting, what we, can, what we can show you is you have the Tableau dashboard, and I can actually refresh that to give you a feel of how um, interactive the dashboard rendering is. So as you see, it's already finished. So now I, as the analyst, can just uh, go through uh, the marketing trend when, when I analyze my own product compared to my competitors. So as I'm stepping through the trend, I can also tell you a little more about the four black panels at the bottom just to lift the curtain a little bit of the back end of, of the demo. So we have you know, the first window where it's tailing on Hadap. So you have a lot of activities happening in the Hadap back end. Then we have the second window that's basically showing you the activity of loading more data into the Hadap back engine, uh, uh, the back end. And the third window here is actually all the queries being, pro being generated by Tableau and processed by Hadap in real time. The last one is actually integrating with Mahout. As you know, Mahout is one of the popular MPP Hadoop-based machine learning engine. And this is something we have integrated with Hadapt so that, again, the analyst, analyst can leverage very advanced machine learning kind of functionality just by clicking a couple mouse buttons. So you're bringing some of these popular tools into a single platform. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. and, and you've done that integration. You mentioned Mahout. 
uh, uh, Tableau, the visualization tools, the native Hadapt capability, which is SQL and, and Hadoop. Mm -hmm. um, what would I have had to do prior to doing this in Hadapt? How would it have worked if I were you know, an IT organization? How would I have had to cobble this together? Yeah, so first of all, you will need to hire a team of so-called data scientists or people who have strong expertise to write big data, map produce kind of jobs. And uh, I haven't done detailed research, but my intuition is there's probably uh, around 10,000 people you know, uh, in the world that have that kind of expertise. And many of them are, of course, employed by Cloudera, you know, Hortonworks, and others. Hadapt is about democratizing big data. By that, we mean you have the big data scientists develop these advanced packages once, right, and package it up as SQL functions, so now millions of Tableau users and BI analysts can just conduct the analysis by clicking the, bu the button. So back to your point, Dave, right? Before this, we have to find these data analysts, data scientists that can write the MapReduce jobs and also invoke them and hand the result back to the data analysts, right? Either in the form of visualization or maybe some spreadsheet. And the problem with that is, first of all, there's a lot of latency in developing uh, the technical packages and adapting to the business requirements. And when the analyst wants something to be tweaked, that's another very long cycle of the collaboration. Versus now, when we have the data scientist develop the package, hand it off to the analyst, you know, she can use it, mix and match it in whatever way she wants, right? It's all interactive, and she can, you know, invoke it on different kind of data sets. So you don't need this kind of very, uh, I would say, involved uh, collaboration cycle. So that's really one thing that we added for facilitating the collaboration between the data scientists and the business analysts. Okay. What else can you show us? Yeah, okay. So as I am uh, loading more data, if I refresh the dashboard, you will be able to see that more data is being uh, loaded into the backend and reflected in turn on the Tableau dashboard. So here, as you can see, when I step through the time, there's one bubble corresponding to New York that has turned really red, and that signals attention. So now as the analyst, I can drill into that bubble to understand what's going on. And that triggers a bunch of you know, sophisticated SQL queries, which in turn renders these advanced dashboards. So let me walk you through that. On the upper right corner, we can see the revenue of my product trending uh, over the last, uh, you know, in the recent time window. And we see it hasn't really changed much. So that's not really what's uh, requiring the attention. But when you look at the upper right corner, we're computing the social bus of our own product compared to our competitors. And over the last 24 windows, there's somehow a huge spike of our competitors. So now we can draw into that time window Notice how uh, the queries are being processed in an interactive fashion. And now we can pull up some detailed tweets, you know, tweets happening within that time window. So I'm going to step back and call for attention for a couple of things, right? First of all, we started with high-level aggregation kind of analysis. And now we can draw into very detailed, you know, individual raw tweets. That's from the raw data. That's all happening within one unified platform. You don't need to move data around or you know, materialize things into cubes or other structures. It's all computed on the fly within the same platform. The second one is, what is social bus? It's not a standard MapReduce function or a SQL function. right? It's something that, as I mentioned earlier, that big data scientists can develop once. And this is based on computing the sentiment which uh, we actually leverage Mahout to build such a, such a binary classifier. And we can talk more about how we build it later. So this is combining the sentiment of individual tweets as well as the influence level of the Twitter authors. So you can match up different variables to compute a single metric we call a uh, social bus. And now you expose that advanced package on the Tableau interface so the business analyst do doesn't need to know how it's implemented. Right? Uh, you can just refresh the dashboard, and as I will show you later, drag and drop columns to invoke this kind of functionality. 
So actually, let me show you another example to drive the point home. If I could ask you a question before you do that. Please. So you, when you loaded that data in, you showed us you loaded more data in. Yep. So, so the data source was um, you know, some, some Twitter data, yep. right? Mm -hmm. um, and when you load it in, are, mm -hmm. are you doing like a, a, it's not an external ETL, right? It's a sort of mm -hmm. simplified internal ETL. Is that a, a layman, I know a layman term here, but can you explain that a little bit? I would say the ETL process is definitely much uh, simplified compared mm -hmm. to some of the traditional BI kind of ETL workflow. So in this case, we are integrating different kinds of data sources. That's one of the advantages of HADAP, being able to analyze a large variety of data. Mm -hmm. So the first dimension is public versus private data, right? We uh, downloaded live Twitter feeds from social media, that's public. But you're also mashing up with our private company's sales record, because we want to understand the dynamics of different variables and how that has been influencing the adoption of my company's product. In this case, we just picked sort of you know energy drink, uh, a topic that everyone can relate to, right. right? Public or private. Second dimension: structured and unstructured. You have sales records that are spreadsheet-like structured, but you have those Twitter, you know, human text, something that's unstructured. And again, you can analyze all of them within one unified platform. Excellent. Okay. So let me show you another advanced analytics package. Uh, just, you know, for example, if I am a business analyst, I may want to attach a dollar number to each tweet, right? I want to understand which tweets are highly influential. So maybe I can go after those Twitter authors or find authors of similar profile to have them endorse my product. I'd like to know that. Could I get paid every time I tweet? <laughs> I'd be, I'd Absolutely. Be Why not? That's, that's a great <laughs> business model. So the way I do it is I drag and drop uh, an advanced analytic package called Dollar Wars. I drag it onto the dashboard. Okay, it's looking good, but I don't like summation, so let me compute average, right? So it's done. It's all interactive. What's happening behind the hood is definitely non-trivial, right? The way we invoke this kind of advanced analytics as part of the MPP sort of HADAP platform, right? And uh, this is actually bypassing MapReduce to, re to achieve this kind of interactive performance. But the analyst doesn't need to know anything about that. You just drag and drop columns, and that's something that anyone can extend a Tableau dashboard with this kind of advanced uh, functionality. So that's you know, something that you know, Tableau users are very familiar with, but before HADAPT, they are not able to invoke advanced packages in this intuitive, visualized uh, fashion. Just to show you one more advanced analytic function we have integrated into HADAPT, it's full text search. So I vaguely recall there were some tweets mentioning interesting recipe with, let's say, Red Bull and vodka, okay? So if I search uh, all tweets mentioning vodka, okay, I have a couple hits, that's good. Now, if I s spell it slightly differently, right, V-O-T-C-A, I don't find anything. So maybe because I'm not a native speaker or for other reasons, I can't find anything. That's annoying, right? But let me do what's called a fuzzy search. Right, so notice this is something that standard SQL doesn't support. The exact matching that I gave earlier, right? If you spell it correctly, you have the substring matching. That's something you can uh, leverage standard SQL databases to do. But if I do fuzzy search, look, I found a couple of tweets I like, and even the tweets themselves have different spellings. You have V-O-D-K-A, you know, V-O-D-C-A, and so on, right? Because people are speaking different languages, or this is just informal social context. So this is very powerful. I don't want to you know, mislead uh, the audience into thinking only non-native speakers can leverage this, right? This is really about being able to analyze the social sort of text, you know, a body of text in a fuzzy way to find all the relevant information that you are looking for. Um, and it, you know, previously, only the data scientists and very technical people can set up, let's say, Apache Solar, a very popular open source full text engine. So the solar underneath, okay. Exactly, set it up and uh, run this kind of search. What we did is we integrated it with Hadapt and exposed the full text uh, functionality onto the BI interface such as Tableau. So is now you can do this kind of you know, search engine kind of experience interactively. Is the fuzzy search capability, is that native to solar? Is that something you developed uh, and integrated? Talk about that. So this functionality is actually native to solar. Maybe not everyone knows this, but the beauty of this kind of integrating with other tools, as opposed to building from scratch, is you can really unearth a lot of nice functionality that you could just you know, leverage. And of course, one of the key contributions with Hadapt is we integrated into our SQL language. 
So now you don't need to issue a separate you know, solar query with its own syntax, and then maybe bring back the data for additional SQL or ML processing. You just do a unified SQL query that does part of the you know, keyword searching and additional you know, analytics for sentiment, for building predictive modeling, uh, and what have you. I wonder if we can geek out a little bit, not too much, but just at a high level. So can you talk, uh, Ming Sheng, about how your, your team, the team at Adapt has actually achieved this unification? I mean, what's going on underneath here? What's the innovation, the secret sauce? Sure, so one of the key contributions, as we discussed earlier, Dave, is really unifying the MPP database cluster with the Hadoop cluster. So for those of you who are interested, you can actually go back to uh, read the, the research paper called Hadoop DB, uh, originating from uh, Yale Research Lab. In short, what we uh, did is basically, we built um, a relational storage and full-fledged engine. So it's not just for storage, but also it does all the relational processing for filtering, join, aggregation kind of uh, processing on each Hadoop node. So now on each Hadoop node, you have your familiar HDFS storage and MapReduce engine, but you also have the relational storage and engine. Now for each incoming query, for a Hadapt uh, SQL query, we would decide, first of all, if it could bypass the MapReduce engine. Because as you know, whenever you invoke MapReduce engine, even to extract one single bit, it might take you know, 15 seconds. It's just this constant startup overhead. And that's the core reason why MapReduce or Hadoop is not interactive. And we actually built a, a separate engine sitting side by side with MapReduce so that for the incoming query, if it can be made interactive, we bypass the MapReduce engine. We go to our own engine directly and answer that query. Now, for more sophisticated queries, we basically would uh, translate that SQL query into a MapReduce job, which then runs um, on top of all the Hadoop and Hadap nodes. And the data can come from HDFS, our optimized relational store, as well as HBase. And the performance, of course, would vary depending on where you store the data. For example, if the data is in our optimized storage, you get far better performance. That's one of the original benefits in the Hadoop DB. That's the, one of the key contributions. Because you can push down not just filtering, but aggregation, and in many cases, drawing into the individual Hadoop nodes without needing to retrieve all the data, shuffling the data around, and processing them in the MapReduce layer. So as you bring together these SQL and NoSQL worlds, I mean, obviously you don't have the maturity of, uh, of SQL. It's been around for decades. Uh, but you, you, can you do things like user-defined functions? Yeah, exactly. So uh, recording the demo, a couple pieces we showed you, full text search, uh, you know, computing the sentiment, uh, computing the dollar worth of each tweet. These are all user-defined functions that someone can just write once plug into Hadapt, and now millions of BI users can invoke them. And now how about column store? I mean, that's something that obviously a body knows something about. Is there, do you use a column store in, in this approach? Not at this moment. It's on our product roadmap. You gotta start somewhere. Um, we definitely see column store as yet another major source of performance integration. When we design the product roadmap and uh, drive sort of the maturity of the product, we uh, took care in striking a balance between providing very fast performance and, and uh, some additional benefits, such as invoking advanced analytics, you know, being able to do um, full text search, uh, and BI tools integration. So as of now, certainly the performance of uh, our SQL processing won't be on par with some of the MPP leaders. On the other hand, compared to MapReduce and Hive, it's already an order of magnitude or even faster. And that's what you see here, Dave, that allows this kind of interactive performance. Well, you're trying to simplify Hadoop and bring Hadoop to a much wider uh, audience yep. uh, mm -hmm. at uh, su substantially better economics. Is that, that's what I see now. So the, the, the trade-off might be um, the full functionality that you'll get out of SQL. Uh, but that's really not your objective. So that'll evolve over time, presumably. So you're saying Column Store, for instance, is on your roadmap. When, when Column Store comes out, that will presumably enhance performance. Is that correct? I mean, Absolutely. It will it further enhance the performance on top of the you know, interactivity that we're already providing. 
And uh, to your point earlier, Dave, it's actually our goal to build all the standard SQL 92 and 99 functionality. And uh, since you know the company was founded, um, we have made a lot of headway building this kind of SQL, standard SQL functionality. So it's definitely not just you know the the hive uh, that people see uh, on top of Hadoop. Well, so you mentioned Hive. I mean, it really is a, a Cloudera's approach with Impala mm -hmm. is uh, to, to integrate HBase and, and Hive. Can you talk about um, because it, it sounds very similar of what mm -hmm. Cloudera is doing. There's a unification going on. So talk about the differences. Why would a company, a customer, buy Adapt and, for example, not uh, uh, Impala? Mm -hmm. So a couple of things. I would say, first of all, if you look at the nature of these two companies, uh, interactive SQL processing and advanced analytics is all we do for a living. That's the core strengths and the core positioning of Hadapt. We're a product company. Whereas compared to Cloudera, they have a very established and successful business in uh, service and training. And uh, you know, we don't need to worry about you know, cannibalizing uh, any of our existing uh, revenue base or you know, being concerned with making the product too easy to use. We're all about democratizing big data. And as you see uh, from the demo here, Dave, right, we really empowered millions of BI analysts to leverage the power of Hadap and Hadoop. So that's the first one. Now, I'm a technologist, so I'm actually more comfortable talking about a couple more technical differentiations. So I would say that um, the first one is, as I showed you in the demo, we have, you know, this is a working demo, and uh, you know, the productized version will be released uh, in Q1 next year. And this is already working with Tableau and other BI tools. We are aware that uh, it is you know, Impala's goal to also support BI uh, integration, but uh, you know, at some point, I think they will be ready um, in that front. Um, another um, item that I want to call out again is the advanced functionality. We call it Adapt Development Kit, or HDK. So, so through this HDK, you can integrate advanced uh, features like uh, in integrating with Mahout for uh, sentiment analysis or other predictive modeling, integrating with Solar for full text search, and uh, integrating with HBase for low latency, you know, data loading and updates, and you know, with R for advanced analytics. So these are just examples, right? The possibility is limitless, is endless, and it's all through this kind of customized, pluggable sort of uh, you know, analytic modules that uh, we support. So your strategy then is to, to uh, expose the world through your SDK or HDK, you call it, to mm -hmm. uh, your capabilities, the API, and, and that's how the integration of other tools ideally will happen, is that yep. correct? Exactly. Uh, excellent. Um, now, I had another question about visualization. Tableau uh, is by far the, the company that you hear uh, the buzz and big data visualization all about, but interestingly, Tableau predates Hadoop. So it really wasn't designed with this sort of distributed nature in mind. Uh, are you seeing other visualization tools emerge and will you integrate with those or do you expect those to really catch on? Or does Tableau have such a lead? I mean, do you have an opinion on that? That's, that's a really interesting question. I would say my answer uh, is twofold, right? First of all, there are a lot of existing BI tools in the market that uh, people just simply cannot afford to ignore. And that's one of the beauties with um, Hadapt. Although, at, to your point, Tableau was you know, uh, released, you know, designed and you know, uh, went to market much earlier, even before uh, Hadapt was founded, right? But through the standard ODBC, JDBC protocol and standard SQL, as long as the backend supports it, now let me stress the point, it's not Hive. Right, Hive might work with Tableau through some customization, but other B standard BI tools will not. So either you have enough uh, resource to convince each you know, uh, BI tool to change their product, or you have to go and comply with the standard, which is SQL, ODBC, and JDBC. And that's exactly what uh, Hadap does. Right? So this is what it allows us to connect with not just Tableau and all the other existing BI tools. Now, the second part is, additional new paradigms of visualization. I certainly see that up and coming. You have a lot of HTML5 based, you know, or specific, let's say, map based, um, uh, you know, visualization uh, tools. I would say that uh, at this point, um, Hadapt as a company sees the core strengths in developing the backend. So we are not looking to develop customized, let's say, HTML5 based visualization mm -hmm. yet. 
down the road it might change. But right now that's our core focus, um, as opposed to some other vendors that also um, you know, provide sort of an integrated experience uh, with their own customized uh, BI tool uh, or visualization tool and uh, the data engine uh, and some other components. But you're trying to be a platform uh, to the tools, agnostic to uh, the yeah. individual tool. Mm -hmm. uh, so interesting conversation about Tableau. I mean, my prediction is that Tableau is a hot company. They get the user conference coming up next week, uh, next month. They are uh, very mature. Uh, I think they're going to be the, uh, they, I think they're going to IPO. I think it's going to be a hot IPO. Uh, they're exploding. And I also think they're going to get a lot of competition for the reasons that we mentioned that it's a hot space, you know, they've been around for a while, there's new ways to attack that problem, so I think you're gonna see tons of people coming into the, to the marketplace there. Okay, so Ming Sheng, thanks very much. I really appreciate you uh, coming on theCUBE and, and sharing with us your perspectives. The demo, real time, meets a dupe, the unification of the SQL and the NoSQL worlds, trends that we're watching here, bringing visualization in, integrating multiple tools. Congratulations on uh, winning the uh, the, the startup showcase at Strata plus Hadoop World and uh, getting the product ready. Uh, we'll be looking forward to the, to the progress and keeping in touch. Thank you, Dave. Great to be here. Yeah, really appreciate it. All right, everybody, thank you very much for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time. This is Dave Vellante from Wikibon.org, and this is theCUBE. Thanks for watching.